flu season is ramping up early. The CDC says 60% of the country has some level of flu activity, and that's unusually high for this time of year. The Army's top germ lab was abruptly shut down. Tonight, the CDC trying to extinguish the health emergency linked to e-cigarettes until it figures out why so many people are getting serious lung injuries. This year, even before peak season, 30 states are reporting a higher number of flu cases than at the same point last year or even for the last 10 years. In historic Frederick, Maryland, are the biological warfare laboratories. Volunteers were a picked group to expose a person to a biological aerosol. Dajiahao, I'm Nathan Rich, aka Wu Guo Dawang. You know, there's been a lot of conspiracy theories going around about this COVID-19 outbreak. Some of them have to do with the military games that took place in Wuhan in October of 2019. And some other ones have to do with vaping in America. And one that may seem even more far-fetched has to do with a medical research laboratory that was closed down in America in August. But how could a military medical research center being closed down in August have anything to do with an outbreak. I mean, it's not like there was an outbreak of a mystery respiratory illness that was causing pneumonia immediately in the vicinity of that facility right before they closed it down or anything. No, there wasn't one. There were two. the Chemical and Biological Defense Unit of the Department of Defense announces bidding for a DOD Phase 1 project. It specifically mentions SARS-CoV and MERS. They're trying to develop a resistance to them. Phase 1 is to identify broadly acting small molecule inhibitors of virus infection. Some kind of a treatment that they can give to humans so that they won't be affected by these viruses. Warfare is mentioned several times and they want to start doing lots of replication of these viruses and test their different products to prevent infection. In a nearby town in Fort Detrick, the military research facility puts out an advertisement for hiring an animal caretaker, suggesting that they have animals at this facility. In June, the CDC goes to this medical facility and they find that this facility has not been following protocols about containment. And it's exactly at this point that vaping illness, which had been around for a couple of years, suddenly starts the first and only enormous boom in cases. Now, why are we even talking about vaping illness? It's interesting for two reasons. The only enormous spike it has ever had in cases happens to go along with this entire timeline. And its symptoms are literally almost exactly the same as COVID-19. Even the lung CT scans, which are very strange, are strange in the exact same way as they are strange in COVID-19. They have a sort of a ground glass appearance inside of the lungs. It also causes pneumonia, fever. And so that's why this has come into this timeline. Since 2014, elderly people did not need to tell their doctors if they had pneumonia to get a certain kind of vaccination. But on this day, the CDC changes that and says now, if you want that vaccination, you have to first tell your doctor that you have symptoms and then they will give it to you. And we do know that the CDC monitors healthcare visits from patients. They have a very advanced system that tracks keywords, symptoms, all kinds of stuff. And here on July 1st, the Department of Defense just cancels that request for bidding. And they give no explanation as to why that happened. So this is the Department of Defense CBD. It's in Virginia. And here is Fort Detrick. It's in Maryland. So right around the time that they canceled this phase one project, a mystery respiratory disease is reported in Northern Virginia. There are over 60 elderly people infected and there are deaths and some of them have contracted pneumonia. Wisconsin reports a vaping illness cluster. How do people form a cluster if it's non-communicable? Don't know. Two deaths from the mystery respiratory illness reported. Here we see another advertisement for an animal caretaker at Fort Diedrich. And here on the 15th of July, 2019, the CDC sends a cease and desist letter to the lab, telling them essentially to shut down most operations. Then we see another death related to this mystery respiratory disease that's causing pneumonia. And then we find another mystery respiratory illness that's causing pneumonia. That one is right here, right outside of Washington, D.C., which is the headquarters for all of these operations. On the 18th of July, the military lab is shut down. Now, what is this military lab actually doing? Even though in the past they've gotten in trouble for 
handling viruses that weren't in their database, you can actually find a list of those ones which are in their database. So these are the agents and toxins at Fort Detrick. Swine flu, Ebola, and SARS-associated coronavirus. So it seems that they have animals there, they have a coronavirus there, and that they were shut down for failing to comply with proper containment protocols. So because we can see reports in July of over 60 people being infected, that may have happened in June. Illinois reports a cluster of vaping illness. The US CDC looks into those two nursing homes that aren't related to each other, that both are in the proximity of this laboratory, that both fell victim to an unexplained respiratory illness that causes pneumonia. And they declare that the cause is the common cold. By this point, the case rate has more than doubled in one month. On the 5th of August, this is when it was widely reported that the lab had been shut down. And the CDC says it can't release details because of, quote, national security concerns. On the 19th of August, 2019, the CDC pushes for expansion of its already existing surveillance system for patients' symptoms. The NSSP is something that essentially spies on you when you're going to the hospital and telling your symptoms and that kind of stuff. Here on the 21st of August, it's announced that something called the Event 201 will take place. This is essentially a forum about what might happen in a global pandemic, focusing more on, by the way, the economic impact rather than on the loss of life. Here we see the first death attributed to vaping illness ever in the years that it's been tracked. Maryland reports that vaping pneumonia cases have doubled and Virginia is also rising. Here the CDC reminds the public to get flu shots. Here the CDC reminds people not to kiss their chickens. We'll come back to that one later. And this is the earliest theorized date of the COVID-19 outbreak. Starting around October of each year, the CDC starts to track the flu season. And that begins here on the 28th of September. The next day is the peak vaping illness cases. From the day after they start tracking flus till now, the cases have inexplicably gone down. No one knows why the cases of vaping illness started to go down as soon as they started reporting on flu illness. These are Maryland, which is where the biochemical research laboratory is. So overall, the flu activity was a level two and the intensity was a level one. This also includes flu-like illnesses. ILI means influenza-like illnesses. But the percent of people going to hospitals for influenza was higher than it had been in at least four years. And the influenza-like illness emergency visits percent was the second highest in four years. They do these reports weekly and the next week it was the same. The week after that, the flu activity was level five and Maryland is the first state in the United States with widespread flu activity. And this is more unusual than it seems because if we look at prior years, we can see something interesting. So this was the week before the first case was identified in China but this is 2015. And you can see that Maryland is low activity. And this is the same week from 2016, Maryland is very low. And this is the same week from 2017. There's a lot more activity going on, but Maryland is very low. And this is the same week from 2018. There's some activity, but Maryland is very low. This is the actual week before the virus was first noticed in China, and Maryland is high activity, as well as, by the way, Virginia. In all these years, Virginia and Maryland did not have high activity at this time, but 2019, they both did. Then the Wuhan Military Games event begins. And at the same time, Event 201 in NYC happens. The next week, activity goes down a bit in America, but there's the first flu death and the first pneumonia outbreak is recorded. And this is just in Maryland I'm talking about. By the time that the Wuhan Military Games event is over, everything is right across the board. What sort of theory could we put together from all this? Well, looking at this evidence, you could say it's possible that the US military was doing experiments on animals using coronaviruses. And because they failed to follow protocols for containment, there was an outbreak nearby. The CDC found out about this, investigated what was happening, told the public it was a common cold, and then shut down the lab. Then they started reporting the outbreak as cases of vaping illness. 
which had nearly identical symptoms. Then they waited until flu season started and started transferring those over to regular flu and just chalking it up as, oh, this is a bad flu season. And then, either intentionally or accidentally, somebody who went to Wuhan was infected and spread that virus to Wuhan. So that's one theory you could come up with from this. And so if somebody tells you that, it's not unfounded. It's not based on no evidence. But I want to present you with another side to this story. So let's go back. The CDC did say that there was no exposure to humans caused by the breach in protocols. And with vaping illness, it does seem a little strange to me that of all these thousands of cases, not one doctor anywhere would have noticed that it's a coronavirus. And remember how I said I'll come back to the CDC chicken thing? The reason that I put this here, CDC reminds people not to kiss their chickens. This is true, by the way. Centers for Disease Control says don't kiss your chickens. But the reason that I put it here is to show you that the other things that I put here are all related to this, or at least potentially related to this. But this one isn't. And that goes to show you that I could have added a lot more things here and it would soften the blow of seeing this. The CDC did many things during this time. It wasn't all just about flu. So this kind of waters down that argument a little bit. And there's a few more things that make this seem less likely. For example, Maryland didn't report a cluster of vaping illness. It did report the clusters of old people getting sick, but not vaping. Meanwhile, Illinois and Minnesota did, which seems kind of a stretch coming from Maryland. Also, Maryland having a very high activity during the flu season doesn't necessarily mean as much as it sounds like because a lot of America had a very high flu season, which you might say is further evidence, but that's not proof of anything. It could just literally be that it was a high flu season. And remember when I showed you this data about 2018, 2017, 2016, 2015, and all of them showed that Virginia and Maryland were low compared to what they were in 2019. Well, what happens if we look at 2014? Suddenly the picture changes because in 2014, we didn't have a huge outbreak. So maybe this was just a year of heavy flu and 2019 wasn't, and it was actually coronavirus. But I mean, maybe it was just a year of high flu activity. So the information that I showed you is a little bit skewed towards trying to show this theory as being right. There's a lot of little things like that that I can find in these reports, that I can find in the data that doesn't support or even goes against the narrative that this entire thing has been a coronavirus, including, by the way, the fact that every study that I've seen that talks about the first strand of the virus doesn't show it anywhere even near August. And there's been a lot of reports that there's no evidence of the virus being created in a lab. Now, personally, I don't put a lot of weight to that because if they had animals and they're giving them viruses and their mission isn't to create a new virus, but to protect against a virus, then you probably wouldn't see any evidence that that was created in a lab because it's just a virus. You're not engineering it. Another thing that seems to go against this narrative is Maryland and Virginia don't have a particularly high amount of COVID-19 cases, which if it were spreading for months, you would assume would be very high in that area. But then again, the CDC is covering up so much information that it's very hard to tell. So when I look at this entire thing, personally, what I see is there's evidence that this started in America, but there's also evidence that it didn't. And so personally, I have to go with what seems the most likely to me. And based on the evidence that I was able to find, what seems the most likely to me is that this outbreak either started in Wuhan or with somebody who went there directly from somewhere else. So my conclusion based on the evidence that I have access to is it's not strong enough to say that the United States definitely did this. I would need a lot more concrete evidence. Now, now what kind of evidence would I need to really say that? You would have to go back and test the people who died at these retirement homes specifically for the virus that causes COVID-19. If you find that in them, then this all starts to shape up and you pretty much know. But we all know that the CDC is not going to do that. So I just thought I would give you some insight into the merits of this theory and some problems I find with it. If you take these events and you line them up on a timeline, it can seem very nefarious, but none of it is actually proof. It's all just evidence that you can kind of say this narrative might be true, which means that I don't think people are crazy for believing this, but 
personally, I won't until such a time that I see stronger evidence for it, particularly if they get test results from those elderly people who died in the mysterious outbreaks. It's also possible, by the way, that the laboratory leak caused nothing and these people just got some bacterial infection and that was it. It's also possible that the lab did cause a leak and it has nothing to do with COVID-19 and these people died and it was covered up and it, it's totally unrelated. There's many possibilities and the fact is we need to form conclusions based on facts. And the facts that I see tell me that this is very interesting, it's a fascinating idea, the evidence isn't strong enough. And so to me, it seems like this outbreak either started in Hubei or it started with someone who came to Hubei, but we would really need to find evidence for that. And so the search continues. The vaping thing does seem quite a bit strange that it was spiking and then just suddenly went down and there's no explanation for it and no one knows what causes it and it happens to align with all of this. So it's definitely an interesting theory. I really hope that researchers will demand more information about these things, but because the CDC is so opaque, it's gonna be really tough to find out any truths. Another major thing that goes against this narrative is if there's been an outbreak of COVID-19 in America since August, it really seems like some doctor somewhere would have noticed this. But a crazy thing about this vaping illness is it's so similar to COVID-19 it even has the situation where you will treat somebody with antibiotics and they'll seem to be getting better and then come back in their pneumonias even worse, which is almost exactly the definition for pneumonia of an unknown cause. So the only reason that we call this vaping illness is because the thing that everybody has in common is that they're vaping. But the interesting thing is, vaping also increases your likeliness of getting COVID-19. And this is according to doctors, not according to me. So it could be the case that these people were contracting COVID-19 because they were vaping. Maybe a weaker form of the virus that needed you to be vaping or have weakened lungs to invade your body. We don't know. There's a lot of mystery here. But again, this timeline raises a lot of questions and it doesn't answer too many. We need to continue to research. We need to keep our eyes open and focus on facts. Otherwise, we're gonna get swept away in a million theories. And there's a lot of weird stuff going on here. I admit that for sure. Something weird happened last year in America, but I don't have enough evidence to say definitively that it was a COVID-19 cover-up. So if there's anything that you think is missing from this timeline, please let me know. And the best way to fight back against this type of thing is to spread this information, spread this video, spread other sources of reliable facts that try to take a look at things in a, maybe it was this, maybe it wasn't, here's the facts on each side type of way. Because we really need to continue this concept of fact-based knowledge. And just remember that wherever it came from, what matters most now is helping countries that really need us the most. So let's do that. Thanks everybody. See ya.